Hi guys, C-Man here. Uh, today we're going to talk about level bombing in Aces High 2. Uh, this is something that was uh, asked of me to do a video about. I've had several people ask about how I accomplish level bombing, how I get the, uh, the accuracy that I do, and some of my methods. And so I'd like to talk about a little bit of that. Um, you know, the way we set up the bomb site, the way we drop the bombs, and then some strategic and tactical aims as well. And so hopefully when we're done with this, you'll have a better understanding of exactly how it is that I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, before we get into too much detail, there is some physics associated with bombing that we need to discuss here. Uh, and I find it sometimes easier to show what I'm talking about as opposed to just talking. So what we're doing here is we have a B-17, we're in the offline arena, we could ignore those drones buzzing around. We're coming up on a bomber hangar here, we're just going to drop some bombs directly on top of this hangar and see what happens. Uh, we're going into the bomb site now, uh, checking our lineup. We're lined up directly for the bomber hangar. We're at about 2,000 feet here, uh, a little bit less than that, and we're accelerating through 175 knots. Uh, I think we end up at about 190 when we drop the bombs. But we're just going to see what happens here when we drop bombs directly on top of the head of this bomber hangar. You can see we've got a good lineup here. We're coming up on it. Crosshairs are getting close. And right about now, there we go, we're going to drop some bombs. And let's look at what these bombs are doing. They're not falling straight down. They're still going. And they're still going. And there we go. We missed horribly. So let's talk about exactly why we missed so catastrophically there. So these are the important issues associated with this. The first is that bombs don't fall straight down. They continue going forward roughly at the speed that the aircraft was traveling when you released the bombs. If I'm traveling forward at 200 knots, my bombs continue to travel forward at generally 200 knots until such time as they hit something, namely the ground, a hangar, or whatever it is that I'm aiming at. So it's important to aim ahead of where the aircraft currently is. Okay, we're in the training arena here. We're going to do a little bit more uh, experimentation. And basically, we're going to see what happens with some different drop parameters. Uh, we're in the bomb site here. We're coming up on a uh, V base, I believe it is. We're just going to drop a bomb on the uh, non strategic hangar. But you'll notice this time, even though our speed is about the same, we're still going 190 knots. But this time, we're much higher. We're up above 11,000 feet. So we're just going to take a look here and see what happens when we drop this bomb from 11,000 feet. Okay, we're coming up on the V-Base. We see our uh, non-strat hangar there, uh, also known as the indestructible hangar. A little bit of game background there. And we're going to drop our bombs right there, right directly on top of that non-strat hangar. And now let's just see what happens. You can see the bombs have uh, continued on with the aircraft, as we've discussed. And we're still going. And we're still going. And we're still going. You can see some craters there from where we practiced before. And then finally our bombs hit the ground and we're not even on the reservation. We're in a completely different zip code from that base. So obviously dropping from a higher altitude has increased our miss here by a fairly significant margin. And coming back to our issues that we've discussed, we're coming along to the next one, which is higher altitude results in a higher drop time. What's important about this is a little longer drop time means that the bomb is spending more time traveling forward. In our example before, if our bomb is traveling at 200 knots, let's say from 11,000 feet it takes 10 or 12 seconds for that, drop, for that bomb to fall. Now it's spending 10 or 12 seconds traveling forward at 200 knots as opposed to perhaps just one or two. What we need to take away from this is that the higher we are, the further we need to aim ahead to compensate for the fact that that, that bomb is going to spend much more time traveling forward. Okay, we're back in the training arena here. We're going to take a look at another parameter that's going to affect our drop. And that's going to be the aircraft speed at release. As you can see, we're low to the ground here. We're only about 2,000 feet again, the same as in our first example. But we're traveling much, much faster. We're going about 285 knots right now. We're slowing down, actually, because I, uh, I've got the speed from a dive, and the aircraft can't actually continue level quite that fast, but we're going to be going significantly faster than we were the first time, so we just want to see how this affects our drop. And we're coming up on our same V-Base here. We're going to drop on the same uh, indestructible hangar. And you can see right there we're bombs out, and our bombs are continuing forward. You can even see visually here the bombs are traveling a lot faster, and we're way off the base here. We've missed by a lot more than we did the first time around, even at the same altitude. 
So let's add this to our list as well. Dropping at a higher airspeed results in a higher bomb airspeed because the bomb's airspeed at release is the same as that of the aircraft. As a result, given the same altitude and the same drop time, the bomb is going to travel further downrange as a result of this higher speed. So this brings us to uh, an interesting question, and that's how do we know how far ahead of the aircraft we need to aim in order for our bombs to hit? The answer to this question is use the bomb site. The bomb site is a device which is designed to tell you how far ahead of the aircraft you need to drop your bombs to put them on target. It takes your altitude and your airspeed into account and it essentially shows you where your bombs are going to hit if you release them right now. This brings us to the single most important topic we're going to talk about here and that's bomb site calibration. Calibration is the process of configuring the bomb site for your aircraft's altitude and airspeed in such a way that it accurately tells you where your bombs are going to hit. Now because I know you're uh, tired of looking at my cheesy slides, we're going to take a look at an example here in game. You can see we're coming up on a uh, V-Base. This happens to be a Rook V-Base in offline mode. We all know the Rooks are the best people to bomb, so we're going to bomb this indestructible again. And I'm going to show you what I see going on in game that I think is leading to a lot of the problems here. We're going to go into the bomb site, we're going to calibrate, we hit the button, we uh, hit U, we hold Y for a couple of seconds, we hit U again. And now we're all calibrated and good to go. Okay, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here because I know you don't want to just stare at me flying it over the ground. We're coming up on our target here. We're down in the bomb site. You can see we're uh, getting close here. We're going to drop our bombs directly on this indestructible hangar. You'll also notice the bomb site is actually pointing forward, so it's trying to show me where my bombs are going to hit the ground when I release them. We're bombs out now. We're going to switch to our calibration mode here. I like to do that just because it lets me look straight down and get a better idea of where my bombs are going to hit. And we're going to watch these guys in. We're going to see what happens. Okay, you've seen our bombs hit the ground right there, and as you can see, we've missed pretty badly again. Uh, we did calibrate the bomb site, so we're not uh, we're not quite as bad as we were doing before. But that's still obviously that's a really terrible result. If you're going to bomb on a hangar, we want to make sure we hit the hangar. So let's uh, let's talk about exactly what went wrong there and why that bomb missed so badly. Okay, let's go back and take a look at this and see what happened here. Uh, this time, though, we're going to pause the video right at the instant of drop, and let's take a look at our calibration here. The first thing we're going to look at is our calibrated airspeed and our current speed. Our calibrated speed in this case is 161, while our current speed is 224. Basically, what this is telling me is that the aircraft is doing over 60 knots faster than what the bomb site is compensating for. That's going to cause our bomb to be traveling 60 knots faster than what the bomb site is adding for us. The next thing we're going to look at is our drop altitude and our altitude. Our drop altitude is 9,783 feet. That's what the bomb site is set up for. And our actual altitude is 9,802 feet. So in this case, the aircraft is 25 feet higher than the bomb site calibration is configured for. The result of these two put together is that our bombs are going to travel significantly farther than what the bomb site expects because the aircraft is not only traveling faster, which as we remember uh, results in the bombs traveling faster, but the, also, the aircraft is also marginally higher, which gives the bombs a slightly longer drop time. The combination of a longer drop time and a faster than expected drop speed results in a miss with the bombs going uh, significantly farther beyond the target than we expected. And that's what we see in our result. Our bombs land way beyond this uh, indestructible hangar that we're trying to bomb here. So this brings us to the three critical aspects of bomb site calibration. The first of these is airspeed. Our airspeed needs to be within two knots uh, between our calibrated airspeed and our actual airspeed. And these are ideally identical. The closer we can get these to being the same number, the better our results will be. Uh, extensive testing, though, has shown that two knots is generally enough to be the difference in missing a uh, the smallest of the targets that we're going to bomb. So that's usually the window that we want to try and hit. The next of our critical uh, variables here is going to be our altitude. Our drop altitude and our actual altitude, we want these to be within 10 feet or so. Again, 10 feet seems to be the window at which we're going to miss the smallest of the things that you're ever going to be bombing. But uh, just like the airspeed, the closer you can get these to being the same, the better the results you're going to have are. Now let's talk about the last of the critical aspects, and this is actually going to be the wind. 
Uh, this is handled automatically by the game, so it's pretty rare that you actually need to think about this in terms of numbers like you do with altitude and airspeed. But it does also affect your bombs. Yeah, crosswind will result in bomb drift and things of that nature. Again, just simply by calibrating the bomb site, the game is handling all of this automatically for you. But the important thing to take away from this is whenever the wind changes, you need to recalibrate the bomb site. Uh, generally, wind changes are going to be a result of significant changes in altitude, which we're going to calibrate the bomb site again anyway at that point. Or when we're turning over a target, if we make one pass and then we turn around and come back going the other direction, the wind is now 180 degrees different. So that means that we need to recalibrate that bomb site every time we, we make a turn or a significant course change. Okay, we're going to talk about some tips here for getting that good calibration that's so important. The first is use your throttle aggressively to keep your actual airspeed and your calibrated airspeed as close to identical as you can. If you notice that your aircraft is a little bit faster than what you're calibrated for, pull the throttle back, slow down. If you notice that your aircraft is a little bit slower than your calibration, push the throttle forward, speed up. But you don't need to worry so much about stabilizing your airspeed if you're using that throttle continuously to keep that calibration as good as you can. Okay, the next tip we have here is going to involve the altitude. And we want to engage the level autopilot and allow our altitude to stabilize before we calibrate the bomb site. Now, unlike the airspeed where we can use the throttle and we, and we have a fairly responsive mechanism for adjusting uh, airspeed, with that level mode autopilot, it's very difficult to dial in the aircraft to an exact altitude. So instead of flying the airplane to the calibration, we really need that altitude to be as stable and as smooth as possible when we calibrate. So make sure you get that level mode autopilot on ahead of time and let the aircraft fly on autopilot for a while before you calibrate, and that'll get your altitude nice and stabilized. Now this third tip is actually something where uh, I disagree with some fairly prominent players on this and this has just been, been my experience, but that's don't bomb at full throttle. Um, the problem with bombing at full throttle is if you find yourself slower than your calibration, let's say I'm uh, calibrated for 235 knots and my actual speed is 228 and I'm already at full throttle. I can't push my throttle forward anymore in order to try and speed up to match that calibrated value. Now in some, uh, in some bombers like the Lancasters you've got WEP and you can use that but you don't have as much responsiveness with turning WEP on and off repeatedly as you do with, uh, with manipulating the throttle. And in other bombers, stuff like the B-17s, B-24s, you don't have WEP at all. So if you're at full throttle and you're too slow, you're screwed. At that point you have to recalibrate. You're probably closer to the, to the target at that point and you know that's more going on than you need to deal with. So I like to throttle back when I calibrate and that gives me margin for error to both increase Increase and decrease the throttle if I see that being necessary. Uh, as far as the values I use, generally if you look at the E6B in game, you're just going to look at the normal cruise setting for whatever aircraft you're flying. Uh, and something like a Lancaster, it's going to be boost 4 uh, in a B-17. It's going to be about 35 manifold, uh, 38 manifold in a B-17, 35 in a B-24. But when in doubt, look at that E6B in game. Use your normal cruise power setting, your normal power, and that'll give you a good place to start. Okay, because I don't like missing my targets and to restore what little bit of faith might be left in my good name, we're going to take a look at how to do this right here. Uh, you can see we're in the offline arena. We're just coming up on our same uh, Rook V-Base. Again, I love bombing the Rooks. I'm sorry, I just can't help it. <laughs> anyway, we're approaching uh, we're about 6,000 feet here. You can see I'm coming out of an auto climb. We're just turning nose on the target. We're leveling off here. You can see we've got the autopilot level mode on now. We're pulling our throttle back to 38 manifold. Again, that's the uh, normal power setting for the B-17. If we look at our bomb site, we can see we're speeding up quite a bit, and we're still climbing a little as well. Uh, it does take that level mode autopilot a little bit to stabilize. So again, ahead of time here, I've got it in level flight. I've got the throttle pulled back to my normal setting. And at this point, the bomb doors are open. They do add a little bit of drag, so we want to get those open ahead of time so that that's all being factored in. Um, again, I'm using the, uh, the nose gun sight here. A uh, little trick there, if you don't uh, move your joystick left or right at all, if you go to your, your nose gunner position, the Chen gun and the B-17, the nose gun and the, and the Lancaster, or what have you, uh, you can use that sight as a little cheaty way to line up on the target. Uh, again, as long as you don't move your stick left or right, it's going to point directly ahead. So this is going to show us exactly where the aircraft is going. You can see here, I'm again, I'm using this uh, chin gun sight, my B-17. 
to line up on the target. It's just behind that little ridge there. We can't quite see it yet. But I've done this enough times now that I know about where it is. So I'm starting to line up on it a little bit early here. Uh, we can see that little patch of bushes there that's uh, just to the left of the V-base. So I'm going to aim a little bit right of that. And we're going to bomb on our indestructible hangar again, and hopefully this time we'll kill it. Um, yes, we're killing an indestructible hangar. It's, uh, the name comes from back in the Aces High 1 days, uh, where these hangars truly were indestructible. Uh, nowadays, they're referred to as non-strategic objects. That basically means they do nothing at all. But they're, uh, they're good for target practice. So we're just coming over the ridge there. There's our non-strat hangar again. I'm, I'm just doing a, uh, a little bit of a J and L turn that's using rudder trim to uh, to line up the aircraft with that level mode autopilot on. Checking the bomb site. Um, I'm happy with my altitude now. It's stabilized. It's not changing at all. So I think now is a good time to go ahead and calibrate. I'm holding this Y button down a little bit longer than, than the two seconds that's required. Uh, the longer you hold that button down, the better your initial values are going to be, and the better those are, the less work I have to do. Come out of calibration, you can see our altitude spot on at 6,081 feet. My airspeed was a little bit fast. I was going 217. It calibrated at 216. So I'm just pulling a little bit of throttle here just to maintain that 216 knots. Uh, and we're coming up on the target here. We're just going to drop our bombs right at the front edge of this hangar. I'm just going to manually trigger three, one there, there, and there. And now that our bombs are out, I'm actually going to switch back to my calibration mode. And what this is going to let me do is look directly below the aircraft. So again, this is sort of a battle damage assessment, if you will. I can watch and actually see where my bombs hit and get an idea of how good I did. Okay, we're coming up on impact any second here. There we go. That was right on target. That is, uh, that's certainly a good kill there. That's about as well as can be done, I believe. And you see, I guess the biggest trick to that was just the fact that I had both of those values pegged. And you can see what the results of that were. Okay, in closing, we'll talk about some final tips for level bombing. The first is going to be know your targets. Know what they look like, know where they are on the field, and know how much ordnance is required for them. Um, if you're going into a field and you're going to drop fighters and, ve and vehicles, for instance, you have to know what fighter hangars look like, you have to know what vehicle hangars look like, and you have to generally know where on the field you're going to be pointing to hit them. Um, a good way to learn this, if you're not familiar with it, is take the airfield map, uh, put it up on a second monitor if you have that, print it out if you want to, and then go to a small airfield, uh, grab a jeep, and drive around the airfield and look at all of the objects with the map in your hand. You know, look at what an ammo bunker looks like, look at what a barracks looks like, look at what a fuel bunker looks like. That will aid you greatly. Uh, once you're done with that, go up in a light aircraft, a, a Spitfire, a Storch, or whatever your plane of choice is, and fly around and learn what those look like from the air. You know, learn how to distinguish a bomber hangar from an indestructible hangar. Know what a fighter hangar looks like from the air, because seeing a fighter hangar on the ground, seeing it in the air are very different things. Know your targets. That's going to be very, very important. The next tip is going to be know the dot salvo and the dot delay commands. Salvo is the number of bombs that are dropped every time you press the release button, and delay is the amount of time in seconds between those drops. Uh, if you're going to be doing general purpose hangar dropping, which is going to be what you're spending a lot of your time on, uh, if you're carrying 1,000 pound bombs, salvo 2. If you're carrying 500 pound bombs, salvo 3. Uh, the reason for that is a hangar takes 2,600 pounds of ordnance to drop. Remember, know your targets. Know that a hangar takes 2,600 pounds. And remember that when you have drones, all of your, your drops are multiplied by 3. So if I'm dropping 2,000 pounds of bombs in my aircraft, my two drones are also dropping 2,000 pounds of bombs. So I'm putting a total of 6,000 pounds of ordnance on the target. Uh, it, on something the size of a hangar or a point target, it's almost impossible to get every single bomb on the target. Uh, but you're getting them close, you're doing a lot of splash damage. So those are good rules of thumb for guaranteed kills on hangars. Okay, the next tip is going to be turn into your target early, line up early, and whenever possible, line up multiple targets. Remember that for our calibration, we want to give ourselves plenty of time. The sooner you can get lined up on that target in the autopilot level mode, the better off you're going to be. So turn on to the target early, or as soon as practical, and line up multiple targets. You're going to, in practice, you're going to spend most of your time flying away from the target, turning around, and flying back in and calibrating. You're going to spend very little time over target and dropping bombs. So the, the more you can line up multiple targets, the more you can take out two or three targets every pass, the better off you're going to be, the faster you're going to get your job done, you're going to get the heck out of there, and the more time you're going to give yourself before those hangers start to come back up. 
Okay, our next tip is going to be when you're turning the aircraft, keep your turns level. And by level, I don't mean wings level. I mean keep a level altitude and use less than 30 degrees of bank. What this is going to do is this is going to ensure that your drones, which is your extra bombers, stay with you. It's actually possible that they get too far away and they get lost. And by staying level, remember that when we engage that level mode autopilot, it takes time for it to settle into a final altitude. So if you're in a 2,000 foot per minute climb or descent in your turn, when you turn that autopilot back on, you've got to wait longer before the altitude stabilizes. By keeping 30 degrees of bank and level turns, when we engage that autopilot, it's going to take very little time for it to stabilize and settle out into a final altitude. Uh, in, in some cases under duress, even I've been able to calibrate immediately after turning the autopilot on. And the only reason I'm able to do that is because I kept my turns nice and level and there was very little adjustment for that autopilot to make. Our next tip when making multiple passes on a target is going to be to turn back in on the target when you're approximately one third to one half of the way inside the radar ring. And what this is going to allow you to do is have time to level off, stabilize, and recalibrate once you finish turning back in on the target. Uh, I found that in practice, halfway inside the radar ring is, is a good uh, number to use. I have, in, in situations of extreme need, uh, done that turn as soon as uh, one-third away from the field. And by one-third, I mean the, the third that's closer to the airfield, not the third that's closer to the edge of the radar ring. But what that's going to allow you to do is, is turn back in, get settled in, get your next targets lined up. It gives you time to, to look ahead of you and, and make sure you're pointed the right direction to get your calibration straight and get everything set up. While at the same time, you're turning back in on the target as soon as possible. I can't stress that enough. You need to, you need to be quick about make one run, turn back in, make another run. Uh, in practice, you're going to spend most of your time killing hangars. Hangars are only down for 15 minutes. If it takes you 12 minutes to, to fly over the field making five passes and dropping all the hangars, by the time you're done, you've only got three minutes left, and that's no good to anybody. So it's, it's important that you want to make that turn in as soon as you can, but don't forget that you need to give yourself that time to get everything settled. Okay, and our last tip here is remember that you can make small adjustments when you're in the bomb site using your normal uh, flight controls. These would be your aileron co controls. You have joystick left, joystick right. Uh, you can make small corrections in the bomb site uh, while using this. I advise that you keep these corrections as small as necessary because they do create extra drag, bleed off airspeed, and they can screw up your calibration. But don't miss an opportunity to drop on a second target. Uh, it takes a long time to come back around for another pass. Don't, don't do that when you can make a small correction and, and potentially get an extra target on one pass. Okay, one last section I'm adding sort of as an afterthought here is using the in-game maps and, and lining up targets and lining up bomb runs. This is going to be pretty important. If you don't already know, you can right-click on the, on the field map in the in-game and go to Clipboard Maps. And then in the drop-down list, you could select maps for the various types of field. In this case, we're looking at the, uh, at the map for a small airfield. We see we've got fighter hangars, bomber hangars, vehicle hangars, ord bunkers, fuel bunkers, barracks, etc. Um, in lining up multiple targets, I like to look at this map and visualize which direction I'm going to be flying over the field and try and line myself up so that I can take out multiple targets on each pass so that I'm as efficient as possible. One of the things I spend uh, a lot of my time doing, or I seem to spend a lot of my time doing, is killing the fighters and the vehicles at a, at a small airfield. This is where you're going to spend a, a significant chunk of your time. Um, a small airfield has a single vehicle hangar. It has three fighter hangars. Uh, again, this comes under the category of know your targets, use the maps. Uh, let's say I've got this, this small field and I'm approaching from the east. Uh, I'm going to look at the map and see what I can line up. Generally, I try to line up on the, on the vehicle hangar, the VH first, because that tends to be the most important target. Uh, you want to hurry up and get that down. So I'm going to look at the VH, I'm going to be approaching it from the west, and I'm going to see what else can I get here. Uh, in this case, it looks like I can take one fighter hangar as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll line up so that I'm taking out that VH and that first fighter hangar in my first run. Then once I turn around, I'm coming from the east, and it looks like I can take out these other two fighter hangars with a parallel run here. And this way, in two passes, I've killed four targets, and I've completely disabled fighters and vehicles for this particular airfield. Total time elapsed is somewhere in the order of four to five minutes, depending on the situation. Uh, this is the most efficient way to go about this, and this is going to help you greatly if you can learn to do this. Now let's say I've been approaching this field from the south instead of from the east. I would probably line up something like this. Um, it's not as close to my initial uh, vector, if you will. 
But this is about the closest I'm going to be able to get while still making sure that I drop this field in two passes. Uh, again, you know, I like to look at these maps and I'm at least a sector away from the target. And I'm planning these runs, so I wouldn't approach the field directly from the south. I would approach it, you know, more from the southeast heading northwesterly so that I make sure I'm lined up for that first run. Okay, in closing, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to leave questions, comments, concerns, wh whatever you may have as comments on this video, or feel free to hit me up in-game anytime I play as the name CMAD, as seen here on the screen. I appreciate it, and I hope this helps your level bombing.